thanks so much, Carl. That was so interesting. Because I'll be honest, we came into this process quite late, didn't we? And it was really interesting. What I really liked about you was that you wrote all this long email, and I was like, because mm, I'm a content person. <laughs> I was like, who, who, who is this? <laughs> why, are we, why are we matched together? This is never going to work. Oh, thank you. Um, just got some notes there. Thanks. So, yeah, I think I'm going to keep my um, talk quite short because it's not really about me. It's about Carl. Um, and I think that's, from a mentoring point of view, that, that's the point that I really want to get over. But anyway, um, maybe a bit of background about me. I didn't know that you'd worked in print. So my first job, I'm talking directly to Carl now. <laughs> hey, Carl, I'm going to sing to you. Um, so my first job was in print. And I know what you mean about the whole content thing. It's like content has just colonized everything about words and pictures that we used to know as print and publications. And my background is government, uh, civil service. I used to work for the Disability Rights Commission. So, and I've worked in disability and inclusion. And when, you know, I worked with the people who chained themselves to the railings in their pajamas because they didn't have rights. That, that's where my kind of passion comes from. And um, from working to UX, a kind of not dissimilar. I, I kind of, I was copywriting and I worked for CX, I did lots of freelance work for them and I could always see the fit between my inclusive disability awareness background and working and all that and UX because it was just, it was just a no-brainer that you're designing things for people but if you design them for disabled people then you design them for everyone. And we were saying this in 2001 and I'm going to meetings now in 2023 where people are saying, hey, let's be more inclusive for disabled people. I'm literally, what the actual fuck? This was 22 years ago when the DDA came out in 1995 and then the Equalities Acts in 2010. It's just like, what has happened, you know? We were doing all that. We had lobbying rights. So it's great that companies are doing this, but it's also like, you know, come on, switch on. Get disabled people involved in your companies and stop treating it like a, an adjunct kind of thing. Not that you guys are, but that's my kind of messaging. Uh, where I work for CX at the moment, just quickly before I move on to my mentoring, I said I wouldn't chat, but I am. Uh, got a lot to say. Um, so I work in the government pod in CX, so my, most of my work is around um, kind of public services. Um, most recently, a mental health act. The mental health act is changing, so really passionate about the rights that people will um, have a psychosis or an episode that they actually get choices when they're on the ward. That's what's supposed to be happening. Whether it will happen is, a, is another matter, but I work very closely with policy. I also manage the Talk to Frank drug and alcohol site, for the content there, so making sure that the messaging is there about harm reduction for young people and not about let's ban drugs, they're all bad. So that, that's where I come from. But from a mentoring point of view, back to the... I um, Come on, recognise my... Ah, thank you. Um, I had a mentor that years ago when I was at the Disability Rights Commission. I didn't realise how useful it was until... I just got into a room with this woman who was the head of HR, and I thought, we have nothing in common. Why are we together? And actually, she was really useful around leadership, and the conversation, I think, with mentoring takes its own, its own path. So um, I'm really proud to admit that I'm a highly sensitive person, um, extremely empathic, and that's my personality type, which can also, is great to be a mentor, but also means sometimes you have to retreat from the world and kind of rebuild yourself because, you know, you're giving, giving a lot of yourself. But, I think mentoring to me is a listening space. It's also a creative space. Um, it's a time to share with someone else. I think it's a very imbalanced conversation. That's exactly as it should be. I'm not there to talk about myself. I'm there to listen to you. And also I've got he Heidi is here as well, who isn't gonna talk. I don't know if she's gonna talk, but we also connected through a more traditional kind of, because we're both content people. But I think for me with, with Carl and with Heidi, I kind of weirdly found myself in your lives as a stranger at um, very pivotal times in, in your life, um, when you, you know big changes are happening, Carl, with your job, and Heidi has a, a big move ahead, I think, with her life. Um, I think it's a bonding space. I think there's something about the comfort of strangers, um, which is from the Ian McEwan weird Venice film, not that. And I realized that the original line is from Streetcar Named Desire, which I didn't know either, comfort of strangers. But anyway, it's unstructured, but I think it's a very safe space. I think it's confessional. Um, kind of naturally confessional, where you talk. I remember Heidi, when we spoke, you were like, but what about you? And I'm like, it's not about, as I was thinking, you know, this, is, this is your time, this is your space to talk about your, your stuff. I think naturally we look for a balanced conversation and it's not necessarily about that. And mentoring kind of places you in, if you want to work with a mentor there, they naturally find the dynamic. And it's kind of like research where you should be 80% listening and 20% talking. So I try and adapt that to that space. 
Um, there's no fixed agenda, as far as we know, and um, I'm very interested in people, so I just love talking, meeting people. I find it's an egoless experience, so it's not, as I say, it's not about me and what I want to say. And there's some kind of magical mystery about it all, and the relationship kind of develops organically. I remember, Carl, when you got your job, I think you were, you know, you're a bit, you kind of hit rock bottom, hadn't you? And I, I think I, what did I, you wrote to me and said, I can't remember, what did you say? There's something about, I've hit rock bottom, <laughs> life sucks. And I was like, it's going to be fine. And then you got the job, and I was like, we've only met, like, we don't even, we've met physically tonight. I think that's it. You, you, you talk to someone, they don't know you, they don't know your, your background, your family, any of your personal stuff, but the, what they do, they're there for you in that space and time. Um, and it's a very, as I say, it's a very unselfish thing to do in the nicest possible way, but it's something that I, I really enjoy doing. And I've met two amazing people, and I... They feel like, not like your children, but like, well, what are they going to do next? And I hope they stay in touch. And, and I wanted to thank, because as I say, CX Part, we, um, I work for them. I got into this really late, but I really enjoyed it. And the culmination of it all to be here this evening is really wonderful. And thank you very much. <laughs>